we're going into the new year and the, the national security as it relates to Ukraine, as it relates to support to Israel, as it relates to additional support to Taiwan, as it relates to increasing security on our borders, and as it relates to having a full year defense appropriation for our own Department of Defense, we're not going to be getting any sugar plums in our stockings this year. We're going to get big lumps of coal because the do nothing Congress has done absolutely nothing. They're going to go into the new year. They have no agreement on the top lines. They have no deals worked out on this supplemental that where Ukraine, for example, has already said they've run out of artillery shells. And so we, we're in a very, very bad situation where the Congress has been dithering and, and not getting their work done. And so uh, I think if the political reality is uh, we've got a serious national security issue on the border. It's going to be tied to funding for Ukraine. Um, nobody's going to be able to get around that. So they just need to uh, suck it up and get their work done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> OK, well, General, this really has been cast as a, as competing national security interests, if you will. There's a messaging battle kind of happening. On the one side, you have Republicans saying you have to address national security issues at home first, the U.S. border before you go and give more money to defend another country's border. Speaking here of Ukraine, do you is that argument valid or are the stakes here when it comes to what a potential Russian victory in Ukraine could mean for the global order just just too high for that kind of argument? Look, look, the, the seriousness and the adverse impacts, the Wall Street Journal had an editorial today where one of their most distinguished columnists, uh, retired now, but he writes every once in a while, said one of the big winners in 2023 is, is, is Putin because he basically, the economic sanctions haven't hurt him. Uh, the West is tiring out. We, we couldn't get the final funding for Ukraine finished before the, the thing he, he sees. And, and again, if Putin was to, uh, to win in, in, in Ukraine, it would send a signal to China, to North Korea, to Iran, to be even more aggressive than they've already been. So while the border security is important, uh, I don't see it in the same level and the same drastic consequence that would occur, um, you know, if, if Putin was to win in Ukraine. And right now, uh, again, the Wall Street Journal, a very conservative newspaper, is giving plaudits to Vladimir Putin. Quite a dangerous world we're living in here, uh, General, because we can keep going as I point you to what's happening in the Middle East and specifically this new task force to manage what's happening in the Red Sea, where we're seeing commercial shipping come to a halt based on persistent attacks from these Houthi militants in Yemen. Is it time for the United States to strike at the source? Absolutely. I mean, look, freedom of navigation is an essential element of worldwide commerce, particularly for the United States of America. Uh, that's why we don't want China to basically have domain over the South China Sea, where $5 trillion of the world economy moves through there every year. The, the Red Sea, the, the, the Straits of Hormuz, Panama Canal, the Suez Canal, these have got to be, these waterways have got to be kept open. And frankly, it's ridiculous that basically we are allowing these uh, $100,000 drones to go after our ships and go after these large tankers, and we're spending $2 million per missile to shoot them down. Frankly, uh, where I come from in the military, you go to the source and, and you know, the Houthis are, are isolated down in Yemen, right down at the bottom of the Red Sea. Uh, we should be taking out their their sites where they're firing these missiles from. That's a lot safer way and a lot less risk to our ships and to the tankers than basically trying to shoot them down in the air where they're on the way there. As a young second lieutenant in Vietnam, my, my main mission as a Marine platoon commander was to interdict the, Ho, interdict the Ho Chi Minh Trail where the Chinese brought supplies into the South. And I had this silly notion. I said, well, why don't we try to stop them up north when they're still in China coming through North Vietnam so we don't have to fight with our bayonets when they get here right into our face? Well, what we ought to be doing with the Houthi rebels is taking out their sites where they're firing on our ships before our ships. One one hundred thousand dollar missile, if it was to hit one of these billion dollar destroyers, just like happened in the first Gulf War, when one of our big naval combatants hit a twenty five dollar mine, it did a billion dollars worth of damage. It's just way too risky to do it the way we're doing it now. Certainly, we should have freedom of navigation and keep these waterways open, but we should take the fight to the Houthi rebels where they're firing the missiles. 
Well, General, you just described as the Houthi rebels as being isolated, and yet aren't they a proxy for Iran, which is potentially a much greater threat? And I just wonder if the U.S. were to take that kind of of direct action, if that actually escalates the threat of this turning into a wider regional conflict. Well, Kaylee, I meant isolated geographically. They're located in, in other words, meaning they would not be hard for our attack dogs to find them. They're isolated geographically in a small part of Yemen at the bottom of the Red Sea. We do worry about escalation, but look, uh, uh, Iran has been operating with impunity. Um, We are not deterring them. We have got to take much stronger action, not just against the Houthi rebels, but against the uh, Iranian proxies that are attacking our forces in Iraq and Syria. And we haven't sent a strong enough message uh, that there would be consequences to pay. And again, I don't think uh, Hezbollah has not jumped in in the northern tier other than you know, random attacks. And and Iran does not want to get into a shooting war with the United States. I think the fear of escalation um, is, is is not a realistic any more than I thought the fear of Putin using nuclear weapons and escalating. I think we were way too timid when we first went into Ukraine and held the Ukrainians back when they could have been attacking the Russian supply lines in Russia.